on this that is taken out to seriously reduce the visibility on a busy highway. So that is the situation of the problem that is took from the IPT website. We can see that uh, there are uh, some cars moving on a highway with a thin layer of water on it. And so uh, this creates spray tails uh, at the back of the, these cars when, when they move, uh, move at a certain speed. So uh, this is some video that actually uh, can also uh, is illustrate the, oh, sorry, that can also illustrate the phenomena. Oh, it doesn't want to show. Okay, so I'll skip it. Uh, so the, the release of water droplet, uh, as we would have seen on the last video, is mostly um, uh, created by capillary adhesion, as we assume that uh, there is only a thin layer of water on the road. And also we consider that the droplet initial velocity is always uh, equal to the wheel surface velocity when uh, the droplet is released. And we assume that for a car, the maximum release angle is uh, approximately 10 degrees. And we also uh, neglect or not take into account the internals of the tire ribs and the groove geometries. Uh, so that uh, our experimental approach on this program was to transpose, it, transpose and rescale the problem into a bike. Uh, so uh, for a car, we have the, this water spray effect that we are talking about, and so we can uh, also manage to recreate this effect for a bike. However, for bikes, we don't have uh, bike air flow turbulences, and uh, the maximum, the, the real angle which achieves the maximum spray height and length is not the same as for a car because the car has a maximum um, release angle of 10 degrees because of its geometry. And also uh, the bike has a smaller velocity, velocity range than a uh, car. So our measurements uh, will be first to measure the length and the height of the spray as a function of the bike velocity, then to measure the mean size of the droplets as a function of the bike velocity, and finally um, the, the difference in uh, luminous flux as a function of uh, the bike velocity when adding some uh, luminous uh, source uh, behind uh, the, the back of the car. So uh, this will be our first setup. Uh, we have some uh, a fixed bike on which we uh, under which we put some rail with uh, water in it, and we consider that um, uh, it is such that the, the wheel touch only. The, the, the water in a small surface, and we consider that the volume of water is much larger than the variation of volume of water, and also that the, uh, the, the real speed of the droplets is exactly the same as the well surface uh, speed. And so, to determine um, the velocity of the wheel, we use we uh, measure the time during which we achieve a certain number of pedal rotations. To measure uh, the length of the spray, we use the water traces on the cobblestones. And to measure the, the height of the spray tail, we estimate um, this height at uh, half the distance at the length of the spray tail using volume rule. And this is the result that we get. And obviously, there is something that is wrong, because uh, this setup does not uh, represent the situation of the problem, because we have unwanted additional drag from uh, the projection of water. Um, so to, uh, to better represent the situation, we use uh, the moving back setup in which we have a high-speed camera and on the capture zone we put a measuring tape and uh, the road is wetted with the pyro spray and then just, uh, just by passing with the bike, we can... Okay, sorry. So just by passing uh, with the bike, we can capture the water spray that is uh, created. And so uh, these are the results for, uh, the, from the high-speed uh, camera cap uh, video recording. And we see that um, the, the data that is represent with, represented with process actually match the, the biostic prediction, which is uh, that the, the length and the height of the spray tail goes as uh, v squared, where v is the, is the, um, the speed of the, the bike. Uh, yes, and uh, so we can extrapolate what would be the result for a car. So I said already that for low velocities, we can neglect uh, drag and turbulences uh, for a car uh, and for bikes. So the, the bike transposition would be valid, whereas for high velocities, um, we would have important drag and turbulences uh, on a car, uh, on the same setup with a car. And so um, we can question whether this transposition is valid. And if we assume that 
for some reason on the high velocities the drag is very high. We can consider uh, on, uh, that the, the height of the, the spray uh, tail would be constant and um, therefore the time of flight of the droplet will also be constant. And we could somehow uh, think that uh, the length of the spray tail would be proportional directly to V at the power of one. one. Now uh, I'm going to determine the, the mean droplet uh, that are created, the mean droplet size that are created from the, the, the bike. So first, we can, there are two ways to determine it. First, using the high-speed camera recording. So this is a, a picture from the video that I wanted to show you. You can see that how the, 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 the droplets are created. And the second um, setup that we used is just uh, by, put, by putting blood colored water into the, the rails uh, with the fixed bike and using blotting paper, we can determine visually what are the sizes of the droplet that are created. Um, so uh, the, pa the blotting paper has, has high absorption and low dispersion, so that the size of the mark only depends on the droplet volume. And we can calibrate actually what would be the size of the mark using uh, droplets of no volume. So with uh, these setups, we, uh, uh, we get this data. So the data with the cross in blue are from the high-speed camera, and the circles are from, from the, the blotting paper, where we have only considered uh, two measurements uh, with uh, two different by velocities. And uh, we are I'll also have performed an exponential fit. This exponential fits actually come from uh, extrapolation for very high velocities where we assume that um, the droplet mean size must tend to zero, whereas uh, for, for example in outfit it would only go to, um, uh, it would be non-physical, and we consider that uh, for uh, velocities close to zero it, it must uh, also increase. And so uh, here you have the values for uh, also our exponential fit. And using this exponential fit and um, the 95% confidence bound, you can estimate uh, the values uh, that could be the one for a car, for example, at 40 meters per second. And we get a um, mean droplet value of 0 0.4 approximately a meter. Uh, and now I want to talk about the last uh, point of the, the problem, which is the, the visibility reduction. Okay. Uh, so we consider uh, a model which is often used in astrophysics, in which we have a luminous flux um, which uh, is stopped by a small particle in it, and so we get that the luminous flux, uh, luminous flux is uh, uh, as an exponential decrease, and so there you see a very bad image of the setup where we have the bike and there we put a, a lamp um, just uh, right between uh, the, the lux meter that we use and uh, the, the droplet, the spray tail. And so uh, from this, we get on the log scale, uh, sorry for the count here, uh, the luminous flux as a function of the, the length of the spray, which is assumed uh, to be a V squared over G. And from a linear regression on this graph uh, and the, the following um, uh, formula, we get that uh, we get these two values for F0 and the optical uh, depth. And so we can, uh, assuming that uh, the, the minimum flux that we, is required to uh, uh, to have a, to, to see a, a light spot would be uh, 10 lux, we can see that for a velocity higher than, uh, than approximately uh, 50 meter per second, uh, there would be enough um, uh, spray uh, density to reduce uh, the visibility of the the light lamp at the back of the car. So, yeah, okay. um, so basically, uh, for further insight on this question, uh, we could uh, consider high velocity and the car geometries. Also, for the mean size um, of the droplet, we would uh, need to consider the tire geometry. And finally, for the visibility decrease, I have, I have only considered uh, the uh, intensity uh, decrease, but there will be also mean diffusion and spatial distribution of the droplet. And so, yeah, I would like to thank my partner for this experience. <laughs>